Hi, this is Amar Kalu at AHA 2014 with Fellows in Training blog, FIT blog. It is my pleasure to have Dr. Stubb here, who is one of the co-authors of the AVOID study looking at oxygen use in patients with STEMI. Dr. Stubb, thanks for joining us. Yeah, pleasure to be here, really enjoying AHA. Great to have you. Now, for those people who couldn't be here to hear your presentation, can you give us a background as to what the AVOID study is? Yeah, sure. Look, I think um, all fellows will know on the you know, first day of medical school, whether it be a, a medical school nursing education, first aid course, everyone's taught that oxygen is a, um, you know, a fundamental first treatment for patients with suspected myocardial infarction. And um, you know, this has really been done for over 100 years. Uh, and interestingly enough, there's really not a lot of clinical uh, evidence to support that practice. And I suppose what's maybe more concerning is that there's some nice physiological studies that show it actually may be harmful to render patient, patients hyperoxic, high oxygen levels. And in particular, it's shown significant coronary vasoconstriction, increased coronary vascular resistance, excess production of free radicals and that may in the patients with acute coronary syndrome may contribute to reperfusion injury. So we set about uh, in the modern era of revascularization strategies for STEMI looked at uh, setting up a randomized trial of oxygen versus no oxygen in patients with ST elevation MI. Um, the important thing of our trial that sort of built on some, some earlier uh, smaller randomized control trials was that it started at the first contact of medical care in particular uh, was organised by our Ambulance Victoria in Melbourne, Australia and that all patients had to be enrolled pre-hospital. So it was as the trained paramedics arrived, did a pre-hospital ECG, diagnosed uh, suspected STEMI. Once they showed with a, a pulse oximeter that the patient was not hypoxic and for our study we defined that as more than 94% on a pulse ox, then they were randomised into the study and they were either uh, either oxygen was applied at 8 litres per minute via a, a mask or no oxygen was given. So the patients were just left for standard STEMI care. And then that oxygen or no oxygen continued into the emergency department, into the cath lab and onto the ward. Um, and, that, and that was essentially the intervention. Okay. And can you tell us what the results show? Yeah, so the primary um, uh, endpoint for the study was myocardial infarct size on routine biomarkers, so troponin and, and creatinine kinase. And we showed uh, what, there was a no significant change in troponin. There was uh, a highly significant increase in CK. There was a 25% increase in uh, CK. And the sa it was the same increase in troponin, this 20% increase in the oxygen group. But whilst the troponin was non-significant result, the CK level was highly significant at 0.01. So interestingly, not only did oxygen um, not help, so there was no improvement in pain or symptoms, but there was this signal towards maybe it was causing increased myocardial injury. We then um, followed them with clinical endpoints, but the study only looked at 441 STEMIs, so it wasn't powered for clinical endpoints. But a third of the patients came back for a cardiac MRI at six months, and so we got the gold standard final infarct size. And again, this signal towards harm in oxygen was seen with increased late gadolinium enhancement or amount of scar in the myocardium, and the same 25 to 30% increased scar uh, at six months post uh, with a cardiac MRI. Again, smaller sample. So in this small STEMI trial that looked at, the, the very first time that looked at ambulance care, emergency care, cath lab care of oxygen or no oxygen, there was this very interesting signal towards uh, myocardial injury with excess oxygen. Thank you, very interesting. So in terms of where we go from here, do you recommend avoiding giving oxygen in these patients? or for now just to continue with what is currently the standard of practice? Yeah, look, the thing I take from this is that oxygen should be thought of as a drug. When, and a highly useful drug in patients with hypoxia, you know, it's potentially life-saving. But I question why are we giving this drug indiscriminately? We don't prescribe it. A first aider can apply it in patients with normal oxygen levels. 
And so, uh, look, the guidelines differ internationally. The Europeans don't recommend oxygen, indiscriminate oxygen. The Americans are um, less passionate, but all of them recognise the physiological studies. Uh, so the easy answer is we need more evidence, and there's a large clinical trial being done in Sweden at the moment that I think will formally answer this. Over, you know, they're powering it for mortality, over 6,000 patients. Uh, but no, my practice is clearly hypoxic patients uh, get oxygen. Uh, but no, I, I certainly turn down uh, the oxygen once, you know, when I'm doing emergent STEMI or even get it off in patients who are normoxic. Dr. Sub, thank you very much for your time. You can catch more videos about the late-breaking clinical trials at youtube.com slash fitsonthego.